Hello and welcome back. I'm Matthew and today we are going to look at the F4 prompt feature of the IBM I operating system. So let's get signed in here. Now, even though we see menus and we see a lot of full screen tools when we are using IBM I, fundamentally the way we control the operating system and navigate around the operating system is using its control language which is a command line based uh, language interface, uh, much like the shell in Unix, uh, the command line in uh, DOS and Windows. And anytime we see the selection or command with a big text input area here, we can enter CL commands. Uh, for example, I can work with objects and I wanna work with objects in the Emulsion library and I want to see all objects. So this is my command, and this is a positional parameter. It's just the first parameter. So if I hit enter, I'm working with objects in the Emulsion library. So a lot of the times, if you know what the command is, in this case, work with objects. If I were on Unix, for example, and I didn't know what parameters this takes, I would read the man page. I'd say man, work with objects. They would bring it up. I'd read through it. I'd have to remember the particular options I want. Maybe I'll, I'll jot them down as a note or open another terminal window and keep the man page to the side, whatever the case may be. In IBM I, I just type the command in and I hit the F4 key, which is this prompt key. And when I prompt, the system gives me this interactive screen with the parameters that this command takes, examples or an explanation of what I can type in for that parameter and then the opportunity to actually enter those parameters. So in this case, I want all objects in the M. Wilson library. And if I hit enter, I get the same results I get from before when I knew how to enter the command parameters and I just directly entered them. IVMI also has command history. So like hitting the up arrow in a modern Unix shell, I can hit F9 to retrieve my last command. And here we can see the, the actual command that got run after I prompted for the parameters was work object with the object parameter being in Wilson slash all. Now with this already typed in, uh, and maybe we'll change this, maybe I'll say I want files. Maybe I know part of the command, but I don't remember, oh, how do I do something? Uh, actually, that's the wrong syntax, so I won't do that. Uh, how, do I, you know, how do I restrict it to just the file objects? Well, after I've started typing the command, I can hit F4, and it will pre-fill what I've already entered in the command line, and then give me the opportunity to change additional parameters. So we can hit uh, Enter there, and now I've restricted to just the files. If I quit out of this and hit F9 to retrieve the last command, you can see it added that object type file parameter. So that's pretty cool. So let's look at a more complex command. Create user profile. This is how you create new users in the system. Now this has, if I hit F4, a lot of options. And we're only seeing some of the more commonly used options here. You see we're at the bottom of the option list. So if I'm creating my new user called new user, if I want to see additional parameters, so these are options that maybe aren't used as frequently, but often enough to warrant being in this additional parameters list. I can hit F10, and now all of a sudden you can see there are more options. We have several pages of parameters that this create user profile command takes. Now F10 isn't even necessarily all of the parameters. If I hit F9, that will give me all possible parameters for this command. And now I can page through what all of those parameters are. So very helpful when you're using something like create user profile that has quite a few options. Now, another really nice thing about this is ultimately for commands I use frequently, it will be quicker and more efficient for me to just directly enter the commands on the command line, not have to go through this extra screen and you know navigate down to the one option I wanna change and change it. So as I'm building up my command here, you can hit F14, which is shift F2 in most emulators, and it will show you the command you've built up so far. In this case, I've entered my new username as new user. 
Now it's only going to show me the options where I've provided non-default values, right? If I'm running this from the command line, I'm not gonna type in those 40 options when most of them have sensible defaults. So if I make this user, let's say not a user, but a programmer, I'll hit F14 again, and it's building that command up for me, user class programmer. So something that goes hand in hand with this prompt screen is the context sensitive help. So let's go down to this assistance level field. It's defaulting to sysval, and it looks like there's some other options, basic, intermediate, perhaps some others. So I can do two things here. Prompting can go several levels deep. So I, I hit F4 to get to this screen, but now that I'm in this field, let's hit F4 again for prompt. Now I'm getting a prompt specifically for this field. And so in this case, this field can take one of four uh, system symbol values. These things that start with asterisks are uh, kind of symbolic names for, for values that have meaning to the system, as opposed to just free text entry uh, that a lot of other fields might take. In this case, I, I have several values. System value, I think, means it will just default to the system-wide assistance level. Or for this user, I can, I can set one of these options. So let's say we give intermediate assistance. Again, F14. You can see it's building this command up for me. The other thing I could have done, instead of hitting F4 to prompt this field, there's context-sensitive help. I can press F1, and I'm bringing up the help for this specific field, the specific parameter to this specific command. So I can read through that and find out, well, what is basic? What is intermediate? What is advanced? And what does this field even do? Well, it specifies which user interface to use. I can make that bigger if I want more space to read about that. And if I'm not in a field, if I'm just up here, I can hit F1 and I get help for the whole command. So what does this command even do? You know, What are all of the options that are relevant? So it's nice having that context sensitive, excuse me, context sensitive help within my ability to build up the specific parameters I want to pass to this command. Uh, you can see things like supplemental groups. This takes uh, one or more values. So I can just hit plus here to bring up a screen where for this supplemental groups parameter, I can type, you know, group one, group two, group three. It probably doesn't let me do that if I have none there. Group zero and it'll build that command out, F14, and you can see how that's built. So it's a space-separated list of those groups inside the supplemental group profiles parameter. So prompting, it's really neat. Um, you know, it's much more interactive and I think, you know, helpful a lot of times than Unix man pages. Uh, VMS had a help system that let you kind of interactively browse the help and browse help for individual parameters instead of it being just one big long scrolling page like Unix man pages. But even then you had to go into the help, see what the parameters are, make notes about the parameters, fully exit out of help, and then start typing in the command yourself. Whereas here, it's all kind of rolled into one and I'm not having to write down or remember between one screen and the next what particular parameters I want. So a couple other nice features from this prompt screen. You know, as we've seen, you can see the command that it's building up, uh, which is useful if you want to then, you know, include this in the equivalent of a batch file, a control language program on IBM I, uh, or just for learning in the future. Oh yeah, here's something I do frequently. I just want to type in the command directly. But you can hit F11 for keywords, and that switches the view from showing you example values for the parameter to actually showing you, if I can hit the right key on the keyboard here, to actually showing you the parameter name. So again, this is useful if you're wanting to learn the command uh, to be able to use it directly, to use it in a control language program. Uh, so I can see, okay, user PRF, PWEXP, status. These are the actual parameter names if I just wanted to type in these commands myself. Uh, initial menu main. So the default for initial menu is main, but if I override that, let's just override, uh, when I look at that command string again, we should see the INL menu command is now saying override from the default library list. And sure enough, the initial menu command is called, or parameter I should say, is called INL MNU, and I've now set that to override.
So we saw that here. All right, enough of that. Let's exit out of this. I don't remember if we talked about command history. So F9 will show me, uh, let's say I ran the command before I for, uh, before I hit the F14 to show me what the command string was built. It's like, oh, well, I don't want to run the command again, but I wish I had looked at what that command string was. You just recall it from your history and, and it'll be there for you. So prompting is used not only on this command line, but a lot of the interactive applications in IBM I support prompting as well. This is particularly useful when you're doing certain types of programming. So let's start the program development manager. And let's say we are writing an RPG program. RPG is a language, uh, actually let's use DDS. Uh, DDS is the language on IBM I use to describe database files. Uh, essentially, your table schemas uh, is one of the things you can do with it. And I have a test program here. Let's just make a new one. I call it test2. You'll notice this is a prompt screen. So I'm using this interactive utility. It's giving me the prompt screen to start the source entry utility, uh, which is kind of nice because now I can use all of the same features. I can use F4 in here to prompt a specific field. Uh, in this case, this is going to be a physical file. Uh, I can use F1. I get help for that field, right? So it's all it's all the same. One of the nice things about IBM I is just how consistent everything is in terms of how it works. And so once you learn the basics for one or two areas or commands, everything really starts feeling the same and, and pretty comfortable. Okay, so now I'm in the text editor. Now DDS is a... Uh, a, I guess you'd call it column-oriented, or very, it's a positional language. So I can't just freeform type in, you know, this is my command. It's actually highlighting this because that's a syntax error, right? I have to include things in the correct positions. Now, this source entry utility is a text editor that is aware of the syntax for DDS files, and in this case, a DDS file defining a physical file. So you can see in my header here, it's actually giving me, this is the column position for the, in this case, literally the letter A, which just identifies this as a DDS file row. Uh, the type goes here, the field name goes here, the record length goes here. Uh, if you're a decimal uh, number, the number of uh, digits and decimal positions uh, goes here, and then any functions for that line. So getting those all in the right place could be a little bit tricky or annoying. Maybe I don't quite know what they are. So in this line of text in my text editor, look at that. I have F4 prompt available. So let's hit F4. And so it's giving me a prompt for a line in a PF definition in a DDS file. Well, that's cool. So the first thing that goes here is a uh, record identifier. And we'll call this record type maybe record one or test one format. And it puts things in the correct position. So I can insert another line and prompt that. And now I'm going to list my field. So maybe my record has an ID. Uh, let's say that is a five-digit long binary number with zero decimal places. You can see it places those parameters um, or keywords or whatever you'd call them in, in this programming language in the correct column for this format. So if I want to add a bunch of fields, I can insert, and I want to say, actually, I'm going to insert, and I want you to prompt me. So IP, uh, and let's make another field. Let's uh, Maybe this is people. So we'll have first name. Um, I don't know how long are first names. 20 alphabetic. And it'll just keep going as I hit enter through each of these. So last name is maybe 30 characters alphabetic. Uh, let's say uh, maybe age is, I guess you could be over 100, so three, and I think I can do zoned decimal uh, as a as a parameter there, and maybe zero, zero decimal positions, we'll just use that as uh, a whole number age. Nope, so Z is not allowed. Uh, so it's highlighting this because it has a syntax error. It's highlighting the specific field that has a problem. Uh, and so in this case, I don't remember, but I bet if I hit F4 to prompt, Oh, I lied. That just gives me this prompt. Uh, I know I can hit F1, though, and it will tell me the options. Let's make that bigger. It'll tell me the options. 
Uh, okay, so zoned decimal is not Z, it's S. So if I make that S, there we go. Now it's happy. And the last thing here, we can say, okay, I want the key, uh, essentially the primary key for this database record to be the ID field. You can see here, it puts my key in the correct position. It puts my ID in the correct position. Uh, and actually we can say we want this to be a, a primary key, which needs to be unique. So in this particular language, and we'll do another video, I think on DDS at some point here, uh, you can actually use a function called unique at the file level. And that means that the key field, which we've defined to be ID, must be unique. So again, this isn't a video on DDS. This is a video on this prompt capability that both the operating system for the command line, as well as tools like this uh, source code editor have for interactive entry of data to build out the correct syntax, the correct positioning, uh, really the correct overall usage of the operating system, uh, which is really convenient and, and really useful uh, no matter where you're using it. Oh, so we'll just save that. Um, yeah, I think that's probably all we need to cover on prompting. Uh, just remember F4 for prompt, F1 for help. Uh, between those two things, you can get pretty far in the IBM I operating system without always having to refer back to the documentation. So if you enjoyed this, thanks for watching, and I hope to bring you more content on IBM I, uh, but also thinking about getting uh, into the mainframe content, like the channel title implies. Uh, next up on the mainframe front, I think we're going to do an MVS 3.8 system generation from scratch. Uh, so that's kind of interesting to do. Jay Mosley has some great instructions for it, but I like to customize it and take it a little further. So that'll be a series coming up in the future. Uh, so if that sounds interesting to you, if you want to see more IBM I or other content, uh, go ahead and subscribe and like the video. And I appreciate you stopping by and watching the video. Thanks. Goodbye.